Okay. There are things that scare me, and then there are things that I think is absolutely amazing. Um, Chat GPT has got to be one of the coolest things I've ever sat down and talked with about World of Tanks and covering some tanks. Today we're going to be going over the IS-3A, and I was blown away. Uh, I've actually been sitting here for like an hour talking to chat GPT about a couple of tanks, dual caliber mechanics, overmatching mechanics. It actually knows all of it. All of it. And I think if I have a question, I'm going to use chat GPT because... Uh, more than likely, I'm, I'm just going to be using the old one because it's based on information from 2021 and older. Um, I don't know about you guys, but holy crap. It, it makes me feel awesome whenever it reads back something I already know about mechanics in the game. And it, you know what? I actually have something I want to ask it. I want to find out the view range cap on what they're using for base view range. Wouldn't that be really cool to know? Yeah, I'm blown away. Um, however, this is saying it might be 400 meters. It might be 445. I'll have to do some testing on that. Um, but you know what? Honestly, chat GPT has blown me away quite a bit. Other than that, let's, let's, um, let's talk about the tank today. IS-3A. Uh, so chat GPT had some replies in this tank that actually makes me a bit jealous of PC. You guys have no idea how much fun I'm having with this. I've just been sitting here asking it questions, and it's just been giving me a lot of responses. So the question I asked it today was, give me a total of five rather than three advantages uh, to use... Okay, sorry. My voice to text is not super good. But it understood what I was asking, and three cons. So the first is auto-loading mechanism, allowing for quick burst of fire and a high burst damage potential. However... On console, we do not have the three-shot advanced autoloader. Instead, we have a version of the tank called the Stockade. More than likely, we're going to be playing two matches today. We're going to be playing one inside the Stockade and one inside of the IS-3A to show you guys the three-shot autoloader and then the single shot, which, whenever it comes down to it, I'd really love that the PC version. Uh, slightly improved mobility compared to the uh, IS-3, uh, the standard IS-3, making it more maneuverable. However, I do believe... That whenever we're going to be probably going over this real fast, I want to double check this because Chad GPT, this is based upon the old system. So it, it, it lies with confidence a lot of the time. And the only way that you can do this is by double checking yourself because of the older version, not the newer version. Surprisingly enough, I did just double check it. The IS3 Auto actually has better forward speed. Better track traverse. So 26 in the IS-3, 38, and then it also has uh, the gun traverse. I wasn't really super worried about this one, but you have your track traverse, which here in the IS-3 we're looking at 30 degrees, and then we're looking at 26. So it's a little bit slower in the track traverse, but honestly, absolutely ridiculous. High rate of fire uh, compared to the IS-3 standard, this is true. I think that the auto-loading mechanism, um, yes. So the IS-3 auto is actually an auto loader. You do not have a loader inside this tank. Rather than having four um, crew members, it actually only has three. So you actually do remove the loader, and you do get a little bit of a better reload. Uh, <laughs> good armor protection on the front of the tank, making it difficult for enemies to penetrate. Uh, sadly, this is old information. I would not say that the armor on this... It's decent, but it doesn't stand out a whole lot. And then maximum gun depression using it on ridge lines, it does okay. 230 millimeters effective armor in some places. You do have a little bit of a weak spot underneath your turret, but you got 249 millimeters of armor all around. Little hatches, honestly, fantastic tank. Not just that, when side scraping, you have a, you know, angled hull that's a 90 millimeter stick. Then you got 90 millimeters, 30 millimeters of spaced armor. You got 20 millimeters of track protection as well. Side scraping is not bad. Reverse side scraping. Top armor 20. Roof 20 millimeters. And this is something right here. I do wonder if console actually did readjust this. And no, they did not. This is one of the biggest disadvantages to the tank. The entire roof of the tank here in the front is only 30 millimeters thick. Which means that 91 millimeters plus is going to be able to overmatch the entire top of this tank. So utilizing your gun depression is going to be the best way to go. Other than that, I don't know about you guys, but ChatGPT, 
I, I've just been having a blast at this. Good gun depression allowing for effective haul down tactics on certain maps. On um, Good gun depression angles, I, I would say yes and no. Uh, allowing for effective haul down tactics on certain maps. The certain map parts, definitely. Hamel's Dwarf. Uh, there's a couple of them. This is compared to PC, though. Uh, relatively low ammo capacity, limiting the amount of damage that can be dealt without reloading. Long reload time for the auto-loading mechanism, leaving the tanks vulnerable to attack during this period. However, on PC, it's an auto-loading mechanism that it has, which is the three-shot auto-loader that works like the Progetto 46, or basically all the Italian tanks that we have in the game. It's reversed. So rather than your final shell, you know, taking the shortest amount of time to load it's actually the first shell that you fire out of the tank you just you, you, the is3a wants you to fire non-stop on pc console sadly we only have a single shot and the part that sucks is i doubt that we will ever have the actual auto loading mechanic of that tank on console because we had the stockade and they don't want to make the stockade seem like it's worse in any way uh, less accuracy than some other tanks in its class, making it less effective at longer ranges. Yes, that is absolutely nuts. And one more question I have for ChatGPT before we jump into some gameplay and play a little bit of the IS-3A. Uh, this, this one's going to be fun. ChatGPT making it very well known. As an AI language model, I do not have personal opinions or feelings. However, I can provide, and it proceeds to provide its own feedback on this so it's saying that we're not you know this is an ai language model i don't have a personal opinions or or feelings however i can provide some insight to how the removal of the auto loading mechanism would impact the is3a and world tanks the auto reloading mechanism is a key feature of the is3a and its removal would significantly alter the tank's play style Without the autoloader, the IS-3A would lose its burst damage potential and its ability to quickly dispatch enemy tanks. Instead, uh, it would become a more traditional heavy tank with a standard single shot gun. So, the one on console, compared to a lot of other tanks, there are better tanks in the game than the IS-3A. This would make the tank less unique and possibly less appealing to players who enjoy its uh, current playstyle. However, it could also make the tank more balanced and less powerful in certain situations. Overall, the impact of removing its autoloading mechanism would um, depend on how it's replaced or compensated in the in the tank's overall design. So, Chad GPT has blown me away. I know how random that was. Just the whole start off, like, hey guys, whoa. There's been a lot of controversy about ChatGPT and using the older one and being able to go over it. I'm going to have some fun with this over the next couple of days. But I completely agree. The play style of the tank compared to PC and console, and I do play on PC, um, is a lot different than what I experience on console compared to PC. PC's IS-3A, I actually play it quite a bit. The one on console, however... I don't find myself enjoying it because it's just like any other. The IS, the IS-5, the Kree Evets, the Stockade, the Fatherland, which is literally just an IS-3A, the Stockade, which is just literally an IS-3A with an autoloader. And then there's just all these tanks in game that can perform what the IS-3A does, but better. But one thing about the IS-3A is that it has one of the best reloads for 122 millimeters, 390 alpha. That's kind of where this tank sits at with what it's capable of doing, how it's set up, and overall what we expect out of it. I mean, even running view range, it's a really bad view range. But top speed, it's it was talking about its mobility and everything else. Sure, I would say it's faster, but it's power to weight compared to the IS-3. We're talking about a 4 difference. We're talking about 10 to 14, almost 15 power to weight difference here. And... The IS-3, it's got a lot more mobility. It's capable of maintaining that top speed, while the IS-3 Auto tends to struggle a tad bit. Other than that, let's go ahead and dive into some matches. And uh, if you guys are blown away just as much as I am about ChatGPT and all the responses that I got, wow, that thing is smart. Who knows, I might try to find a way to replace Blade with ChatGPT. You gotta love that Tier 10 matchmaking. So, um, this weekend, I'm not going to be posting any videos. I might do a stream... Uh, Saturday or Sunday. It just depends. Um, I don't know how my rotation's going, but it's it's going one way or the other. 
I'm going to quickly do this, do that, do this. Ram a Type 5. And there's some game audio for me, so I can actually hear what's going on and not be completely muppified. Uh, wait, muppified. Yeah, we're, we're going to go with that. We're going to call that good. Now... I'm touching stuff aggressively over in my end. I should really play the game. Okay, Grill 15, I am not dead, I'm not spotted. We're perfectly fine. Vanguard. I'm actually kind of wondering what that Vanguard was doing on the map. I'm not even paying attention. I am a horrible player tonight. Centurion AVRE, that's going to be absolutely fantastic. Gun broken on the grill. Detected is gone. 268. Let's actually see if we can pull up right here and peek it. So, the Hall Armor and the I-3A, I would say it's not bad. But at the same time, it's not good. You've got to use gun depression. You've got to give yourself a slight little angle. That way you get a little bit of a better view on the slant there. That way you're not over-pulling. And E50. If he pulls out again, there's a little lobe on his left and right side that you can hit. My hopes are a little high of hitting it. It's like a little ball on the left and right of the turret. If you see those on German tanks, those are weak spots. They are just spaced armor with no armor behind them. So if you have enough penetration with a high explosive, you can actually pin it with the HE round if you do it correctly. Uh, other than that, this is going really slow. Ooh, 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 no, uh oh. Yeah, yeah, good job. No, bad job. You should have pulled out more. Broken gun, and is that a 4005? Nope, that is not a 4005, but it sounds like one. Thank you. 390 blocked. As long as we keep that uh, top armor covered, we should be okay. Fast shell velocity, though. I do believe it is the same as the Kree of Vets. So, we're looking at 1,400, 820, and 790. That is APCR, heat, and high explosive. Nice. There we go. A little bit of assist damage. 769. Nice. Fast shell velocity. It is nice against light tanks. That 1,400 meters a second. Depending on the distance from the target. Normally, you only need a one-second lead. He was pulled up a little bit more. We can hit the side of his gun mantle, but he is not. Kind of want to see if he makes the mistake and pulls up just a tad bit. Because we'll be able to tear right through the frontal armor of that. Honestly, Melanovka, um, with Encounter, I, I'm not a big fan of this map anymore. Because with the Winter variant, this one, it, this entire lake is ice. And because this entire area is ice, it's another spot that you have to fight out. It's an easy haul down. It's a lock position. You have this crossing effect here that just makes it extremely difficult to play in. I'm kind of looking forward to them actually just outright removing this from the game and completely getting rid of it because this map version, the winter version, is just super awful. And uh, that is a really thick 268. That is a thick boy. We're going to go ahead and try and go for the uh, premium round here. Maybe overkill for shooting the hatch, but that is completely fine. I don't want to go through all my standards and rely on heat the entire time because I prefer the shell velocity. Lovely AVREs. Balanced. Anyways, uh, 30 seconds left on the cap. And what's up with me going against tier 10s and doing better than against tier 8s in like every single one of these videos? Uh, 37 seconds. Are they going to pull off? It is 9 to 10. They do have the uh, one tank advantage. Tier 10s are matched. They got a couple of tier 8s extra. Now, fingers crossed we can kind of make a little bit of a push play down there as we lose a Type 5 Heavy to a Death Star. Two tank lead. And Conqueror Game Carrier. Yes, I said Game Carrier, and I meant it. Let's put a shot down. Ooh, that is a high roll. 444. As I'm spamming B, trying to get the premium consumable to go off. It's not even there. High shell velocity, 385. Probably just going to pull back. Good job. Going to load the heat. I want to save some of the standards. See, that's the one thing about it. 30 shells is not bad, but you do run into a little bit of a problem. Ah, now we need to load back into standards because EBR. Going to hit right here. Fingers crossed that we'll be able to maintain. Seriously, how long has it been? 35 seconds. 
416. Good job. EVR took down the tusk. That's a little bit scary. Oh, I don't know about you guys, but I'm a bit uncomfortable. I am very uncomfortable. Return a little bit of an angle right here, just in case that uh, Yag Panther 2 is still up there. Indeed. Gonna load a heat round. Should be able to tear through his uh, superstructure up top right here. There we go, 345. The 12 seconds left, though. This is kind of just a farm simulator right now. 359. 3, 2, 1. Game. There's the EBR. Robin Pimo 7. That's cool. Honestly, though, not bad. I mean, Turan. T57, good game. 4 kills, 6,000 damage. That's nice. Uh, 1,000 and. Uh, yeah, 100,000. And 1. Third class mastery badge. Uh, that was 836 experience, though, so maybe we can get a little bit of a better match. Uh, other than that, let's go ahead and jump into the autoloader. I kind of want to play a little bit of the stockade. So due to the fact that the stockade is an autoloader, you cannot get a gun rimmer. So we're going to be rocking uh, vertical stabilizers on this boy. Uh, along with no high explosives because the reload's too long to utilize them. Speaking of which, I actually have not played the stockade in a very long time. The last time I played the stockade was 7-5-2022. So yeah, July 5th of 2022. That's almost an entire year of me not even attempting to play the stockade. That is kind of crazy. All right, tier 9 is not bad. Two T-49s, Type 4 Heavy, Progetto 66. Um, I can't remember the exact armor of the Progetto, but I do think if it's hauled down, I can load the heat and pin its face. I think so. Like, you can shoot its cheeks in the left and right, and you have a chance of, like, a really decent chance of going through. Or maybe that's with, uh, tier 9s, like, 250 plus pin, is what I want to say. I could be wrong, though. I could be super wrong about that. I could be, like, chat GPT. Yeah, there we go. Get it wrong. Anyways. If, if, uh, any other content creators watch my channel, did use chat GPT, just jump over to the, uh, AI open chat, and... <laughs> Dude, just try it out. I was blown away. I mean, for crying out loud, I didn't start recording until 1 o'clock. And I'm usually recording around 11 o'clock. So it, I, I spent two hours talking to chat GPT. Just going over. Okay, enough of that. The IS-3A and the stockade. Don't get me wrong. I don't mind the stockade. Uh, that is, I, I'd say, like a three-second advantage. It used to be like 28 seconds in the reload. Uh, way back when, before update 6.0. It was pretty bad. I mean, it, it's, it was decent for 393 shots, and I can't remember what the interclip was. But if we ever got the actual version of the IS-3A in-game, its play style would be so much fun. Uh, however, swapping shells... I mean, your first shell is your fastest shell. So you actually don't run into an issue swapping ammunition. Because it... It benefits you to actually fire your ammo. That's what's so cool about that. That is a oh, you're only you're running the small gun. Oh, I was afraid for a moment. No, I'm not so afraid. Uh, that is a Type Four though. I will not be able to pin you unless I shoot your lobe. I missed the lobe. Oh, I missed the lobe a lot. I missed it a lot. We're gonna load the heat. We're gonna back off. TS five. Definitely gonna be loading the heat now. Pop that consumable. We're going to back up the hill right here to give us a little bit of really wonky gun depression, but it's going to work. Progetto 66. CS-53. A lot of tanks pulling up right here. and We are using an autoloader. I kind of don't want to make an aggressive, aggressive pull. So, okay, we're not going to be able to find any wonky depression right here, except for the icebreaker. Let's see if we can go for the ammo rack. CS-53 is an absolutely amazing tank. 
we're actually going to stay with the heat just because of the heavy armor that is down here. I don't want to risk um, swapping out and then needing it because of Progetto 66. Honestly, using it on the 53 just seems like a big downfall, but I, I might find myself using... Actually, no, T28 off from the distance. That is completely fine. Progetto is looking away. We're going to pull... See if we can hit that ammo rack with a super slow shell velocity. See if we can find a shell here. There we go. 405. Let's go ahead and load back into the uh, standard rounds. See if we can pull up on the side of that uh, T28. So, the all round effect of the IS-3A, it's got a fast fire rate. It's got decent mobility. It's got decent hull armor. A really good turret. Turret, however, does kind of fall off with that weak spot on top of 30 millimeters. It is definitely better than PC's weak spot of 20, because, you know, that's that allows 90 mils to pin it. There's a lot of highly aggressive 90 mils in tier 8. So, honestly, if there's anything that I would love to see them do the IS-3A, it would bring in that auto-loading gun. But I have extreme, extreme doubt that they ever will, due to the fact that we have the stockade in the game. And the stockade is an auto-loader that they don't want to... They don't want to make it to where it's like you buy the better version that is the advanced auto-loading mechanics rather than a true auto-loader, which is this right here, where it just loads the shells and it's an original auto-loader rather than, rather than a true auto-loader. That's the way I look at it. So, what do we got? T49, I would love... Love moist talets. Oh, wait, what? No, I, I would love to be able to shoot the T49. Only one of them left. Well, I guess we're just going to go ahead and jump in the next game. And more than likely, we're going to be jumping back inside the, the uh, regular IS-3. Do we have a chance? Very small one. Alrighty, let's see what we can do. Lots of 10s. Uh, three Centurion AVREs. They have been non-stop plaguing the matchmaking since the start of the season. And uh, I don't think it's healthy for the game. In my opinion, I think it's super bad. Ooh, speaking of which, Andre the Giant. More than likely, next week, we're going to be covering that tank and going over space armor mechanics and uh, telling you guys the, the benefits of actually using that gun on the tank rather than the uh, faster reload version that loses the gun shield. There's a pretty big difference there. You'll be surprised to hear it whenever I share it. Uh, other than that, uh, light tanks. Lots and lots of light tanks. Um, I have like 20 YouTube shorts recorded. Thing is, I don't feel like they're good. I, I'm not a big fan of shorts. But some of them show off some pretty decent positions. You guys let me know down in the comment section if you think that using YouTube shorts to show off like some really aggressive light tank scouting positions early game and then doing like a minute explanation of how to rush there or whatever it is that you know you, you want to do in a light, a light tank to get some really aggressive scouting in the game. Honestly, it's um, passive scouting that I like to do more than the active scouting. I'm not a big damage delay when it comes to the light tanks, depending on how the match progresses. But you don't see a lot of passive scouting compared to what you would actually enjoy to see. Let's, uh, fingers crossed that we don't get nuked. Okay, we're not going to get nuked. I feel okay pulling up right here. However, it doesn't change the fact that he can pull and still splash us for an outrageous amount of damage. It's also ridiculous how he is concealed right there. Even I understand that there's bushes in the way, but come on. That thing's camera rating should not be as good as it is for what it has equipped. Clearly. A marvel to behold. It's so well balanced that it disappears in front of your eyes. Basante C45. Do not buy that tank. That thing sucks. But it's got a really good turret. Like, I wish that they would actually buff the reload of the uh, Basante C45. Because once they do that, that tank will be... Something I would recommend non-stop just because of how strong it is. Uh, actually going to go ahead and swap into the heat round here. I don't want to over pull just because Basante's getting nuked and M103's. Uh, what is that? Dragon. Okay, we can put a heat round through your cheek. Or we can completely miss with our absolutely amazing 0 .42 accuracy. Either or works. He, it kind of seems like he's getting pushed. Is that of anything else? Or is that a bot? No, that's a player. Okay. I, I could have just looked at it. 
Okay. Very confused right now. This match is extremely strange. Should be able to... No, 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 no. Okay, that's heat. I have audio this time. I know that's heat. Uh, we'll break your gun. Let's see if you want to use a repair kit. Getting aggressive with a broken gun, my friend. You know, honestly, breaking guns is so much fun. Just because you break somebody's gun, they're going to use a repair kit. Now you can catch them out and track them. That's got to be the funnest part about that. And also, if you're risking Shrav 103Bs, it's always best to load the heat round against those. Because AP and APCR, depending on the caliber of the gun, you are going to auto-bounce. But heat, you aim for the low plate. You should be able to pin. Let's see if he's willing to pull out. I really don't want to pull in, but I might have to here in a sec. It's an E75. We don't have enough gun depression to pull on him. Doesn't mean that I don't want him. I would love to. Strav 103B. There we go. It's not his lower plate. He's going to catch our track. I do think he's got a really good reload. But we have track mechanic. Let's kind of overexpose our track a little bit right here and see if he wants to bait a shot. There we go. A bit of baits we're gonna go for nothing we did bait a shell though so that does that's 105 that does benefit the team not bad i kind of don't want to pull but at the same time i kind of do 420 he's he only has a 320 alpha that's a 780 that can one shot me Beautiful absorption from uh, the M41 Bulldog. Straight into the space armor. Oh yeah, that is not up... Oh, you can tell by the hit points, that's 1,820. We should be able to put heat rounds through his face the entire time. Because that is just the Tiger 2 turret. So we should be able to go right... Never mind. Try that again. We should be able to go through the forehead of the tank with heat. Did you see that? I saw that. I'm gonna want to elevate our gun just a little bit here, just because we don't want to put up with anything crazy. There we go. We only got three more heat rounds, and I kind of don't want to waste them. Oh, it's uncomfortable looking at a 780 up in front right here. Want to go for that track? There we go. His turret's jammed. He's gonna repair it. We're gonna push. Push, 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 push. Bounce, and we're going to die. Oh, well, you know what? Not a bad match. Uh, 2649, 511 spotting. Yeah, I would say that's not bad. Uh, sadly, though, the team kind of did fall apart a little bit, but that's, that's totally okay. I was a bit more worried about what I was doing rather than what the team was doing. Anyways, you guys, I know how random that was to see chat GPT, but I was just astounded by everything that it had. I was trying to ask it about the, the dual caliber mechanic. If you guys don't know what that is, um, let's say that you have a 120 millimeter and you're shooting a 60 millimeter plate. Dual caliber does not start until that 60 millimeters goes down and down and down. So for instance, if you were shooting half of your arm, like half the um, value of your gun, you actually have more overmatch potential. So for instance, you know, let's just show off an example. Okay. So looking at the forehead directly on, um, one thing that we're going to be using on this is 50.8 armor. So right here, we're looking at 134 millimeters all around this area. You're seeing that right there. Now we're going to compare this against the 60 TP, which was, has a 152, but this is 50.8. So it cannot overmatch it because if you times this by three, it exceeds 152. And now against the 152 millimeter from the, um, you know, 60 TP. The example is, is that since the caliber of the gun has a five degrees, you know, AP has five degrees of overmatch while APCR can only go by two degrees. However, if your gun is thicker than the, you know, if it's half, half and then a little bit underneath, you actually have more of a penetration advantage. So for instance, if the tank side scraping right here, we see a lot of just beautiful green compared to auto ricochet. And right here, you see a little bit of yellow, but not a lot. But you see a lot of green. 
locked into auto ricochet. This is only 101 millimeters of side armor. So unless it's maintaining a side scraping position, the 152 is going to be pinning this armor. Now let's compare this to a 120 millimeter or maybe even a 105 millimeter. That's APCR. And so against the Amex 30B, which has 248 penetration, which is two less than the 60 TP, I wanted to find something that was really close to have less of a advantage against the armor. But this is a 105 millimeter, so I guess maybe this is the 50 millimeter. You know what? Actually, let's go a little bit lower. Let's jump down the 90. So right here, we're looking at 400 millimeters effective armor in some places, and you're just going to be seeing big difference due to the overmatch potential of the gun and the way that the armor is all set up. That is what drives me crazy, but this gives you an ex example. Right here, this 101 millimeters of side armor is not a great example because it's not 50, and we're not looking at the top right here at 50.8, which is now 200. Um, yeah, it's over 200 millimeters thick now against APCR, and then against heat, it's over 448. Hopefully, you know, we're just going to go that. We're going to call this good. Hopefully, this gives you guys a little bit of an idea on the way the armor works and then the caliber of the gun and how that all looks whenever you're getting an idea of that I didn't realize that the dual mechanic was a thing, but then once I read about it and once I did a little bit of testing it with it, it actually blew me away. And it makes me realize that a lot of our guns that are 150 millimeters, for instance, like the E100 that only has a uh, 246 millimeters of pin that due to the size of the gun, it's penetration is actually equivalent to that of 258 millimeters because of the, additional overmatch potential that it has due to the caliber of the gun other than that you guys hopefully those were hopefully today was enjoyable i know i enjoyed it chat gpt just blew me away till next time uh might not be until next week and tuesday but may maybe there might be a video on monday i have no idea until then stay safe leave a like comment subscribe seriously leave a like it helps out a lot and comment, guys. I, seriously, it's like one comment per... Don't get me wrong. It's been daily. Like, that'd be exhausting to comment every single day. And never mind. Seriously, though. Leave a like. Helps out a lot. Well, I'm going to go play a couple more tanks and then zonk out because it's 2 in the morning. And more than likely, this video won't be uploaded by 3. So, I'm in a bit of trouble. Yeah.